The Egan matrix gives us a number of ways to create banks of waveforms. We'll talk about that in this set of videos. To start, let's look at banks of sine waves. There's two ways you can do this. One is a brute force method of just creating your five oscillators and manipulating them as a unit. And the other is a sine bank, which we'll look at a little bit after we go through the oscillator-based way of creating the wave bank. Well, let's start by creating a little additive synthesis engine. What we'll do is just output oscillators as sine waves to the output. Of course, with Fourier analysis, you can create any waveform by combining sine waves at different amplitudes. But in practice, we're not going to be able to create any sound here. But we can create a lot of different sounds from triangle to sawtooth to square wave-like sounds by just creating a mixture of sine waves at different amplitudes. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll start by just creating a sine wave direct to output. And you'll see here, if we bring up our spectral analyzer, we should see one tone, the fundamental. That'll move with x as expected. Let's do the same thing, only this time we'll multiply by 2 because we're going to want to add up a harmonic series here. And now we'll send that to output and we should see our two peaks now sure and we can go right up and do that through all five of the oscillators using n as our harmonic two three four five etc and we'll just send those all to the outputs and we're sending it using z so we could very easily overload thing as z goes to unity and we're sending five oscillators out but we won't play too loudly here and it's easy to see our five tones. All right, very nice. We can now change harmonics. If I wanted to, I could change these numbers, but I don't want to use constants, obviously. I want to create some kind of dynamic way to do this. I also don't want to send the same amplitude out for all of my oscillators. I want that to be changeable as well. Well, let's bring up a preset that I've already done here to save time, and you'll see what I've done. So instead of using constants, what I did is I created four barrels, and Ed has this barrel shape 55 that's very nice because it goes from 1 to 12. So what I'll do is create a formula that will map to that, and what I'll do is I'll set it to a max of 12. I'll start it at 1. I won't start it at 0 because if I multiply the frequency by 0, I'll get nothing. And what I'll do is I'll quantize it to 1 or else I will get a floating point range of numbers that will sound like a portamento as I increase these harmonics. So what I'll do now is I'll use the first oscillator as the fundamental so I won't change that one. I set four barrels up with the same setting. The only difference, of course, is that each one of these formulas uses the different barrel, but they're all the same. So in effect now, I can change the harmonics of my oscillators 2, 3, 4, and 5 to anything from the fundamental right up to the 12th harmonic. And that allows me to do very nice little additive synthesis stuff. I've output them all here in a way we'll talk about in a second. So let's just see what happens. We have the fundamental, and let's set this to 2, 3, 4, and 5, which would be the beginnings of a sawtooth-like structure that has all harmonics, right? But we only have five oscillators to deal with. Even so, you can hear it's a little buzzy, as I would expect a sawtooth wave to be. And if I bring up my spectrum analyzer, you can see the harmonics are actually in a descending amplitude. They're not all the same because we do not want them all coming at the same value. We want the amplitude of the harmonics to be descending as the number of the harmonic ascends if we want to get a typical sawtooth wave or perhaps a square wave, which we have the odd harmonic. So let's try setting these to 3, 5, 7, and 9. And this should sound more square wavy like because I don't have any of those even harmonics in it. And it does. Hey, this is fantastic. I have a little additive synthesis engine going on. And now the only other thing we want to look at is how I changed amplitudes a bit. Unfortunately, I don't have four extra barrels that I could set to each 
of the harmonics to give me full dynamic control. But what I did instead is think about what my waveforms normally would do. So let's look at a little table of harmonics here. As the harmonic number increases, for say a sawtooth wave, the amplitude would be one over the harmonic number. So I'd have unity on the fundamental, then my amplitude would shift down as 0 0.5 for the second, 0 0.33, 0 0.25, 0 0.20, etc. Now, for something like a uh, triangle wave, you would want the harmonics to go in the relationship of 1 over n squared, and that would be 1 as a fundamental, then 0 0.25, 0 0.11, 0 0.063, 0 0.4, 0.028, uh, etc. How do I do something like that, maybe, in the matrix? Well, again, I don't have barrels to set for each one of the amplitudes of my harmonic, so I did something else. What I did was set the first harmonic to just go out as unity, since I'm not going to fool around with the amplitude of that one. What I'll do is, for the second oscillator, whatever harmonic I set that to, and let's just assume for now we're going to set them 1 to n, you know, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so for the amplitude of this one, what I did was use a stepped y function. For the bottom half of y, I'm going to divide 1 by my harmonic number. In this case, a, so 1 over n. For the next one, it would be 1 divided by b, because that would be my barrel that controls the next harmonic on the next oscillator, and so forth. And what I did was scale the second half of y in such a manner that the values there are going to come out more 1 over n squared, at least for the second, third, fourth, and fifth harmonics. So they're going to be descending. Let's just take a look and see what that really is doing. If we look at our table, we'd assume that for the second harmonic, I'd have 0.5 as an amplitude and 0.25 as the 1 over n squared. And let's see what happens if I set to the second harmonic. And we'll look at the output of that. It is at the bottom of y, 0.5. If I go to the top of y, you can see it goes to 0.25. And let's just do one more. On this one, the third harmonic is 0.33, and that would go to about 0.11. So on that one, let's go and do the third harmonic setting. Uh, on this one, we'll set at the bottom 0.33, and as I go to top, you can see it's 0.11. And that's what I basically did here to allow me to get on the bottom half of y a 1 over n kind of amplitude, and on the top half of y, at least for the lower harmonics, a 1 over n squared. What's that actually going to do for us? Let's set our waveform up to say a square wave-like sound, 3, 5, 7, and 8 nine and we'll listen to what that sounds like that's a square kind of sound on the bottom and what does it sound like on the top of y a little more triangle like as we would expect on the bottom on the top it's not exact, but at least it gives me a little bit of dynamic variation that I can play with. Finally, because I'm sending these oscillators direct to output through these amplitude scaling formulas, I need a pressure function, a Z function, to control everything. And I do that as a volume multiplier with this formula that I don't set to unity. I set it down a bit so that I don't overload things, and I can easily change that if I need to. That's it for this video. In the next one, we'll take a look at the sine bank, which will allow us to manipulate 16 sine tone oscillators. There. Count them. That should be fun.